Yes, the title is correct. Geno Jennings is wrong. Jesus is not God. Geno Jennings is wrong. Jesus is not God. There are so many scriptures in the Bible that debunks that doctrine, that false doctrine that Jesus is God. And it's sad because there are so many confused people out there that listen to confused preachers, preachers that might not have even been called by God, but they wrongly divide the scriptures, creating confusion among the people of Yah. I'm going to try to rush through this and get as much information out as I possibly can. And I'm going to be using the scriptures. If this video happens to get to Geno Jennings, I welcome him to debunk what I say in this video. Now, knowing him and listening to him, I respect the man because he's got a lot of knowledge. And I like listening to much of his teaching, but a lot of what he says is wrong. And you can hear him putting his own understanding into the scriptures. There are people that refuse to let go of their traditions. They refuse to let go of the lies that have always been told to them. But the first scripture I want to bring forward is taken from the book of John, the first chapter, reading the first to the fifth verse. And it reads as follows. In the beginning was the word. Now, this is the scripture that a lot of them like to use to try to justify that Jesus is God. But it says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God. The word was with God. It's not saying that the word was God, but the word was with God. And then it says, and the word was God. Now, is the word with God or was the word God? The second verse said, the same was in the beginning with God. What was in the beginning with God? His word. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehend or understand it not. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Let's deal with that for a moment. The word was God. The word is the authority of God. I'll repeat that. The word is the authority of God. That's God's spoken word. It's the authority. So the word was with God and the word was God. The same in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. And without the word, without him, was not anything made that was made. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. Now, there's a script in the Bible that says, to Let your light shine before men that they may see the good works. And glorify God which is in heaven. Jesus is also known as the light of the world. I repeat that Jesus is known as the light of the world. So now that Jesus is no longer 
on earth. According to the Bible, he died and God raised him from the dead. So now that Jesus is not here to be the light of the world, men is left here to be the light of the world if they keep his word. Let your light shine. Who is that commandment given to? Is given to men. Let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify God, which is in heaven. So in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. This is referring to the word. All things were made by him, the word. And without him, the word was not anything made that was made. Remember back in the book of Genesis. When God spoke and said, let there be. Things began to happen. Things became a reality. The spoken word became manifest. The spoken word became manifest. Keep that in your mind. Manifest. The next scripture I want to take you to is the book of Exodus. The 20th chapter reading the first to the fifth verse. And God spake all these things saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. I'll repeat that third voice. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. I'll repeat that verse again. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. The fourth verse says, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the waters under the earth. Thou shall not bow thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord, thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. So clearly God is saying that he's one. He's the one and true only God. There's no God before him. The next scripture is taken from the book of John, the fourth chapter, reading the 24th verse. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Now, if God is a spirit, does that mean that Jesus was a spirit that walked the earth? The Bible also says that no man has ever seen God at any time. So if no man has ever seen God at any time, how can Jesus be God? How can Jesus be God when no one has ever seen God? The only person that saw the form of God was Moses, where God allowed Moses to see his backside. He told Moses that you can't see my face. No one has ever seen God's face and lived. So God said, I'm going to pass by you, but yet you have to get behind the cleft of that rock 
and I will pass by and declare my greatness. So while Moses was behind the rock, as instructed by God, God passed by. When Moses came out of the mountain, he was glowing, he was shining, and people feared him because he was in the presence of God. Because he was in the presence of God, Jesus never had that effect on anyone when he walked this earth. As a matter of fact, Jesus said that when you pray, you pray our Father, which are in heaven. So he excluded himself from being God in heaven. He says, when you pray, you pray our Father. And when he prayed, he always prayed to the Most High. He never prayed to himself. So Moses saw him pass by. And when he came out the mountains, after talking to God, people feared him because his face shined like the sun. Just being in the presence of God. So John, the fourth chapter, says God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth, not in flesh. Jesus was flesh. He was born of a woman. He was flesh. And I'm going to get to that in a later scripture. The next scripture is taken from the book of Matthew, the 17th chapter, reading the first to the fifth verse. And it reads as follows. And after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, and his brother, and bringeth them up into a high mountain apart, and was transfigured. In other words, Jesus was changed before them, and was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias talking to, with him. So Moses and Elias was talking with Peter, James, and John and his brother and Jesus. And the fourth verse says, Then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here, if thou wilt. Let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elias. While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of the cloud. Now keep in mind, Jesus is on earth. He's on this mountain, along with Peter, James, and John, and his brother. And Moses and Elias appeared to him, and they were talking with him. And then something else took place. A bright, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Now my question to Geno Jennings is, if Jesus is God, who was talking to Jesus? And saying to Jesus that this is my beloved son. 
Who was saying that Jesus was his son if Jesus was in fact God? I'll repeat that again. While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of the cloud. Keep in mind, Jesus is on earth. Which said, this is my beloved son. This is my beloved son. The Most High is saying, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased, hear ye him. So if Jesus is God, who was talking to him from this cloud, claiming him as his son. Now, I was talking to a dear friend of mine that has passed away, Reverend Jones, um, the father of Grace Jones, and the father of Noel Jones. And me and Reverend Jones used to have these, these debates and discussions because he's apostolic. Like Geno Jennings want to be. See, Geno, Gen Gen Geno Jennings really don't know what he want to be. He's not sure if he's Nation of Islam and he's not sure if he's apostolic. Because one moment he's acting like he's the nation of Islam, in another moment, he's talking like he's apostolic. So, Geno Jennings is somewhat confused. He really don't know where he is or what he is. But I used to have this debate with Reverend Jones, which is apostolic, and I asked Reverend Jones the same question. Who was talking to Jesus? Who was speaking from that cloud claiming Jesus as his son. And according to Reverend Jones, he says he was talking to himself. And I said to Reverend Jones, I said, now, come on, Rev. I said, now, he's talking to himself and answering himself. In this day and time, he would be considered or looked at as a lunatic. He has some serious mental health issues if he's talking to himself and then answering himself back. And I said, so who was claiming Jesus as his son? And he said that was him talking to himself. Which makes no sense at all to me. So I'm asking Geno Jennings and those that believe that Jesus is God, who was speaking from that cloud claiming Jesus as his son? The next scripture I want to give you is taken from 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, reading the 27th and the 28th verse. It says, For he has put all things under his feet. Now, this is the most high talking about, or better yet, this is talking about how the Most High is putting all things under him. Well, first of all, all things are going to be put under Christ. And then as the scriptures say, and then Christ himself is going to have to be put under the feet of the Most High. Jesus also has to submit himself to God. It says in the 27th verse, for he has put all things under his feet. But when he saith all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is accepted, which put all things under him. Pay attention to the 28th verse. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, meaning to Jesus, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him that God may be all in all. Did you catch that? I'm going to read that again. For he has put all things under his feet. This is Christ. But when he saith all things are put under him, when Christ says all things are put under himself, 
it is manifest that he is accepted by the Most High, which did put all things under him, meaning God put all things under Christ. And then it says, and when all things shall be subdued unto him, meaning Christ, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto God, unto him who put all things under him, that God may be all in all. So one day Jesus himself also has to be subject and submit to God. Jesus is not God. The next scripture is taken from the book of John. The first chapter, the 29th verse. The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world. John recognized Jesus as the sacrificial Lamb of God. Keep that in mind. The next scripture, the book of Revelation, the 19th chapter, reading the 6th to 9th verse. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. In other words, God is all powerful and he reigns. The seventh verse says, Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor unto him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come. Remember John? Behold the Lamb of God, the Lamb of God, the Lamb of God. The Lamb is not God. But it's the Lamb of God, which come to take away the sins of the world. So this is saying, let us be glad and rejoice and give honor unto him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come. And his wife, meaning the church, has made herself ready. So Jesus is the Lamb of God. The marriage supper of the Lamb. Remember that? So Jesus is the Lamb of God and the church is the bride of Christ. Jesus is not God. And his wife, meaning the church, has made herself ready. The eighth verse says, And to her, meaning the church, was granted that she, the church, should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. The fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. This is all spiritual. This is a spiritual wedding that's taking place because flesh and blood is not going to enter the kingdom of God. The ninth verse says, And he saith unto me, Write, Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of God. The last and final verse that I'm going to use for today, and there's many more. But I want Geno Jennings if he happens to see this video, and those of you that believe that Jesus is God, see, because the Bible says that he's the express image of God. He's the express image of God, the firstborn of all creation. See, he's the, he's the express image of God. I'm going to look that up for you, and I'm going to read that scripture to you. Okay, and this scripture is taken from Colossians. Give me a few seconds and I'll pull this up for you. Here we go. 
Colossians, the first chapter, reading the 14th to the 16th verse. And this is talking about Jesus. Jesus is not God. He's the son of God. He's the express image of God. He's the word made manifest. See, so all of these scriptures that I shared with you all comes together. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. See, the word became flesh. Jesus is the word of God. He's the express image of God. Excuse me. <laughs> so Colossians, the first chapter, reading the 14th to the 16th verse. Excuse me. Voice kind of got dry there. And it reads as follow. In whom we have redemption through his blood. This is talking about Jesus. Or better yet, I'm even going as far as saying that this is talking about Christ because Jesus and Christ are two separate individuals. Marinate on that. Jesus is the flesh or Yeshua. And there are so many people that can get confused with Jesus, Yeshua. There's no J's in the original Hebrew and all of this confusion. But Jesus is just the flesh. Christ is the spirit part of Jesus. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So in Colossians it says, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin, who is the image of the invisible God, who is the image. What is an image? Look that up. Who is the image of the invisible God? This is not saying that he's God himself. It's saying he's the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. And then in the 16th verse it says, For by him were all things created that are in the heavens, and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. This is referring to the word of God. That's in Colossians, the first chapter, reading the 14th and the 16th verse. The last and final scripture is taken from the first Corinthians. The 15th chapter reading the 45th and the 47th verse. And it reads as follows. And so it is written. The first man, Adam, was made a living soul. Now we read about Adam and Eve and how Eve was beguiled by the serpent and, you know, ate of the fruit, the forbidden fruit, and gave it to her husband, and he did eat. Okay, that's the first Adam. So it says, and so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam, which is Christ, was made a quickening spirit. This is over a lot of your heads. I'm going to read that again. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. The 46th verse says, how be it that was not first, which is spiritual, but that which is natural. In other words, the natural I'll read that again. How be it that was not first, which is spiritual, but that which is natural. See, the natural came first. The first man, Adam, was of the flesh. The second man, Adam, is spiritual. See, that's where the confusion come in 
about Jesus and his name and what name we should use. And, and I understand that the Bible says in the English version that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that he's Lord. But that's the natural side of him. That's the fleshly side of him. The spiritual side is the Christ side. And so it says in the 46th verse, how be it that was not first, which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterward, that which is spiritual. In other words, Christ came, he's the second man of Adam. He's the quickening spirit. He's the, the substitute for the failed Adam. The Adam that was made of flesh and God breathed in him the breath of life and he became a living soul. That Adam fell. So now this is the last man, Adam, which is made a quickening spirit. And then it says again in the 46th verse, how be it that was not first, which is spiritual, but that which is natural. And after that which is spiritual. The last and final verse, the 47th verse says, the first man, Adam, or better yet, the first man is of the earth, which is earthy. The second man is of the Lord, is up, is the Lord from heaven. I read that again. The first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven. So Jesus is not God. And for those of you that believe that he is, I would like for you to, to go over those scriptures, you know, and I, I try to keep this as short as possible. There's a lot of scriptures and there's, and there's plenty more scriptures I could have used but it would have taken up too much time. Uh, my first motive and impression, uh, my, my first motive was to do this, uh, do a video, you know, and I had someone that was going to read for me, but it was just too many scriptures, you know, uh, for her to have to, you know, shuffle through. So I figure I do it. Maybe I'll do that later, but I figure I do this audio and, you know, you guys can go back and, and read those scriptures yourself, read it in its entirety, and see for yourself that um, Jesus is not God. You know, he's the son of God. Yeah. And one day he has to one day submit himself to God himself, you know, because all things are put under Christ. And, uh, and then there's going to come a time where Christ himself is going to be put under God. And when we talk about the oneness of God, we're not saying that 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 Jesus is God. It's just saying that um it's like you have the same mind, you have the same spirit, you know? It's like a husband and wife. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife, and they too shall become one flesh, right? So they come in one flesh does not mean that that man is his wife and the wife is the man. It's just saying that they are in agreement with each other. They're, they're one in mind, they're one in spirit. They become marred together. Hence marriage. They become marred together as one, you know, one unit. And that's how it is when it comes to Christ and the Most High. They're one. So Geno, Geno Jennings is correct when he say that there's not, there's not three gods, you know, because you got some people that teach in the church, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, those three are one. Um, no, that's incorrect as well. It's incorrect. Right. But God is one. There's no other God before him. No one has ever seen God. The Bible tells you no one has ever seen God at any time. No one has ever seen God's face and lived. And Moses is the only man in the scripture. And Moses was a man that God spoke face to face as a man talks to his friend. And because it says he spoke face to face does not necessarily mean that he saw his face. You know, see, he had a relationship with the most high to the point where when Moses died, God gave his eulogy. 
Go back and read it. God gave his eulogy and then caused the wind to come up and bury him to the point where his body was not found to this very day. He buried Moses. He eulogized Moses and then he buried Moses. I'll do a video on that. My next video, maybe later on tonight, will be about that. But God eulogized and buried Moses. Gave a sermon about Moses. Talked about how Moses was. And then he caused the wind to come up and bury Moses. And his body was not found to this day. Right? So it's deep, you know. And, and, and if you don't have a spiritual mind, you're not going to be able to dissect this. But there's a whole lot of scriptures in the Bible. That backs up that Jesus is not God. He's the son of God. See? And he's the express image of God. He's the express image of God. According to the Bible, he's the, he's the express image. The express image. The express image of God. So his word became flesh. See, not only you hear the word, but now you actually see the word. In his lifestyle, in his actions. See, he's the expression of God. See, so when he came down, because again, and in, in, in that teaching where it talks about God put on a body and came down, that's false. Jesus is the express image of God. And you too can become the express image of God if you keep his commandments. Jesus kept his commandments. See, you have Jesus, which is the natural man, and then you have the Christ side of him, which is the spiritual side of him. See, Jesus, he, he even told you, don't, don't, in the book of Revelation, I'm going to end this, in the book of Revelation, when the angel appeared himself before John, and John fell down to worship. He told me, he says, hey, get up, man. Don't worship me. I'm your brother and your companion. You know, worship God. Worship God. See, so Jesus does not want to be worshiped. See, he always pointed you to God. He never pointed you to himself. See, think about that. He pointed you to God. He said, me and my father are one. So if Jesus, in fact, was God, who is he referring to as his father? Who was his father? He says, when you've seen me, you've seen the father. It's like my son. If my son, I taught my son from birth coming up. And so when people meet my son, it's like they're meeting me because he's the express image of me. He's not me, but he's the express image of me. He's a representative of me. When, he, when your children step out to the world, they're representing you. Even when they make bad choices and decisions, they're representing you. And one other scripture that I have in mind. When Jesus was being crucified, and he cried out with a loud voice, and he said, my God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? Who was he crying out to? If Jesus was God, who was he crying out to calling God? You say he's God, but he was being crucified and he cried, my God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? Now, if Jesus was God, he would be all-knowing. And if he's all-knowing, he would know whether or not God actually forsook him. He would have the answer to that question. But he cried out, asking the Father, why did you leave me? Why did you turn your back on me? It was because of the sin of the world that he was carrying. God has no affiliation with sin at all. That's why even in the Bible, he tells you to be holy for I'm holy. So let me end it right there because I'll keep going on and on. Um, and I'm trying to rush this. And I, I, I'm sure this sounds a bit rushed. But uh, maybe I'll do a video and I'll talk about this um, further. You know, but Jesus is not God. He's not God.
And you're making a grave mistake by associating God with partners. God has no partners. And see, that's why I say Gino Jennings really don't know who he is or what he want to be. Because a lot of things he say, I hear in Islam. That he has no God. He bear witness that there's no God but one. You know? And, uh, and he has no partners. That's Islam. That's in the teachings of Islam. He's got the bow ties. He wear the bow ties. And so he really don't know. And he's taking bits and pieces of different religions, different belief system or uh, teachings, and he's applying it to his church. And so that's why he's able to reach people, the Hebrew Israelites and the nation of Islam and all these other guys, because he's taking bits and pieces of their doctrine and he's comprising it into just the church of God. Right? So don't be deceived, you know, don't be deceived by that. But anyway, I'm going to close out feedback. Tell me what you think. Subscribe until next time. I'm fearless.